Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is the next match of the 2v2 June tournament, and it's going to be Dynfriend and Zanuck, Zanuck versus Ralhop and Sigero on Adamantine Mountain. Which I think we did see. Yeah, we saw it recently as 2v2. Or. Yeah, well, once they get started, we have seen everyone here but Ralhop actually in exhibition matches. Though, honestly, it was... Yeah. The girl on Dying Front were okay. They weren't particularly... didn't stand out to me in any particular way. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't recall much in the way of playstyle details from them. But at least we have a game going. That's good. Oh yeah, Scuzzy pointing out that UT the fact that it's UTC means that people might have a problem with time zones. And to that I say, what the hell else are we supposed to do? You can't just specify every- I mean, you're supposed to specify a lot of time zones. And I think we did actually, but yeah, it's like... UTC means... Basically GMT, except not taking daily savings time into account. And also being less culturally imperialistic than GMT. At least as a name. And once again, we had an issue with start versus force start. <sighs> once that's sorted out, though, we should have the match going. Okay. The Dying Front and Sanic. Once they get going. Well, okay, there we go. Now I have the game. I've finally welcomed back to everyone far too soon. Ah. I think I might. Might. No, I'm not gonna bother reintroducing this. We have, this is our round one match. It's, yeah, Kane is being replaced by Dengfrund, and Skillerman is being replaced by Sigero. We're on Adamantine Mountain, which we have seen many a time. It is not an unpopular map. We have Sanic and Dengfrund over the northwest side of the map, with Sigero and Ralhop over in the southeast side of the map. Ralhop not yet connected, and it looks like Sanic is planning on going for gunship rush with Dying Front, or telling Dying Front to go for a gunship rush. Not sure what Sanic himself is planning on doing, he's the only one who's currently set himself up at any position, but hasn't even chosen the commander yet. Ralhop is in, has not yet placed his spot in this opening box. Although, honestly, I don't know why Adamantine Mountain for a team game. Although, admittedly, okay, the economy isn't bad for team games. There's actually quite a lot of metal, though it is fairly concentrated. Southwest, main base. Out northeast main base. That's about it for metal. Dying Freund going for Cloaky apparently. Sanic, I guess, is. Alright, so it looks like Sigero and Ralhop working out their stuff. Ralhop apparently wants to go for defense. San well, Sigero wants to go for air. Well, trying to get Ralhop to go for defense. Sanic, I guess, is going to be the one going for the gunship factory because Dying Freund does not seem particularly keen on that. The Sigaro's in, he's... Let's see what he goes for, has not done any pre-planning. Sigaro going for Jump Bot Factory, Ralhop going for Cloaky Bot Factory. And it looks like Ralhop wants, according to the chat, wants to flank along the west side of the map. Get the audio in, there we go. He wants to flank along the west side of the map while... Sanic is going for Gunship, going for Black Dawn Rush. And very awesome. Auspicious start to this round one match of this particular tournament. It's a big... Well, okay, not that big of a thing. Yeah, round one start with Gunship Ban... or Black Dawn Rush. Not Banshee Rush, what am I saying? Yeah, Black Dawn Rush coming in here, and now Dying Front Santa going for economy once they've pushed out the Black Dawn. And Sigro, Ralahop are decently prepared. I mean, puppies and pyros aren't bad against gunships. Puppies especially. 
Pyro will be dealing a bit of damage to the Black Dawn. And defending against the puppy, there's the trick. No Lotus. Okay, there's one Lotus in place. That will help quite a bit. No Rockos or Warriors, though. And between the Pyro and the Defender, actually, wow. Not a bad setup. We standing to be careful, boys, attacking. Go for Sigurd's Commander directly, taking out one Glaive and not much else. This Black Dawn. What? It's not really doing all that much, gotta be honest. It's trying to do what it can. Going for the Commander once again. Just trying to. Oh, wow. Nice. Kill Sigurd's Commander. Two volleys, but does take it out. So Sigurd's Commander has gone down. And at the same time, that Pyro goes down as well for Ralop. I'm oh, sorry, Sigurd, that was his Pyro. The so Sigurd's Pyro goes down to the Glaze and the Lotus. But the Lotus, that's the real one. That's the best defense I've found against Pyros. Lotus is quite well there. And a Black Dawn. Gonna defend against these Glaze. Getting repaired as well. These Glaze, no, will they come in and kill it? Looks like they might just. The Black Dawn off, getting off the ground and not able to kill more than one Glaze. Unfortunately for that Black Dawn, but these Glaze doing a decent harassment game. Going up to the north and hitting, oh, getting hit by that Lotus. Not quite getting into the blind spots on line of sight. They're going to try, though. Give them that. They are going to try, and... Oh, no! They had a blind spot, too! They could have gone for the Gunship Factory. Not that it really matters at this stage, but still. Gunship Factory, but yeah, that Glaive gets out of there. And the Black Dawn is still in place. Still in play. But... Okay, never mind. Was. Now it's dead. Banshee's coming over to... Make up for the lack of the Black Dawn. Just get Banshee's instead. Well, Archangel's being built up, of course. For Sigro. I mean... He'd be silly not to. At least getting one, although the one downside is he only has four metal coming in. He has no actual metal income other than these two metal extractors. Having lost his commander and the metal income of that, the four metal off that, pretty big blow. Anyway, Archangel is coming in in about a minute. Which is not going to be too bad. Only one Banshee, not a big deal, with nearly a dozen Glaives. How... Ralop should be able to deal with this decently, and the Defenders as well should be able to deal with this. Banshees are not that tough. They're moderately tough. I mean, 600 health isn't bad, but yeah, they're not that tough. Defenders... Two Defenders will knock that down without issue. And at the same time, Sigro going for a counterattack with Glaives. Oh, I guess Ralop just donated those Glaives over because Sigro is the one who has them now, and he's going in for decent harassment, getting rid of two Metal Extractors, and... Just about got a blind spot on here. Oh, nice. Ooh, I didn't notice that. Nice tick there. Barely didn't notice the tick, but still. Blastman coming up for the gunship factory, and it's gonna. There it goes. Gets rid of all those units. While well, the Banshee came around to help defend, so. Nice raid. Got rid of a couple of metal extractors, which is useful to have. So, Dying Friend. Relying a bit on Reclaim to get his economy ahead. But honestly, that was just evening things out. Sigaro is still behind for economy, building another metal extractor. Not quite the best timing, but still he is building it after the attack. While well, standing in time for it, we're a little bit behind. And the Archangel is done! So Sigro does have an Archangel, he does have good anti-air set up. Banshee coming along the south. Well, half a dozen Glaives come along the east side of the map. That's gonna be pretty dangerous. Sigro does have this Metal Extractor. And it's about to go down! The Glaives coming in to take out the Metal Extractor. There's not much that can be done about that. The Freak are gonna go down in just a moment as well, so these Glaives... They are going to be dangerous. Well, it looks like... Oops. Sorry for that. It looks like Sigurdo is going... Well, I was trying to go for Rasmus on the center. But it's not going to work too well. And the Glaives... Wow. Dying Thrones Glaives. Not doing a bad job. Getting rid of some wind generators. Getting rid of the metal extractors. Nearly knocking out Sigurdo's economy. All he has is one metal extractor. 2.5 metal per second. That's it. That's the entirety of his forces right now. Is that one metal extractor? This is going to be extremely difficult for Sigaro and Ralhop at this stage. I think they're just going to have to go into game two. I don't want to call it quite yet, but it is an uphill battle from here. They have taken a lot of harassment damage. They aren't really getting in through. And it looks like all these Rockers are going to die to Glaives. Possibly. No, the Archangel is going to escape. But the Rockos are going to die. They cannot get away. Are they? I think they're on fight. No, they're on straight move. But it doesn't matter, they are all dead, and another Rocco coming in, which is just moving to its death. Fortunately, it looks like the yeah, the Cloakabot Factory has been rallied over to the center of the map. Rattlehop's gonna want to change that up. He needs to change the rally point on that Cloakabot Factory, because he's losing a lot of Roccos at the current stage. Although, 
That being said, Siguro does have... He does have a Pyro, and if he repairs that, he might be able to get... No, the Lotus is too much. Yeah, there's really not much to be said about this. Sanic and Diamond are very well set up for defense. Siguro and Ralhop just have no economy, just rebuilding their economy as best as they can. But basically no economy. They can't easily get over to this section here, nor to the northeast. Even this metal extractor, this is tricky to take. There isn't a whole lot that they have to work with, unfortunately. Siguro is getting that last metal extractor, though, and he is... With some reclaim, that's the one thing they have, but even then, the reclaim is just their own old stuff. And Siguro's commander, of course, that is a good reclaim. Actually, that's something that should have been reclaimed a while ago, I don't know why I didn't point that out. That really should have been reclaimed. However, Dying Front coming with more Glaze, getting a couple more wind generators. Not the best harassment. Does get rid of a few wind gens, which is good, but loses 5 Glaze, which is 300 metal. Well, okay, not 300, it's like 150 metal donation. To Siguro and Ralhop, which I'm sure they'll appreciate. I mean, Siguro's just reclaiming his commander, so he's got 10 metal to work with right now. Building up power generators just for overdrive, I guess, this stage. Really, that's all he's got to work with. For lack of territory control, while Santa and Dynfroid setting up decent territory control. I mean, they've taken the north, but mostly for defenses. They actually haven't even... No, they have taken the metal extractors, because... Hey, you know what? Why not? I mean, that is four metal... Or three metal altogether in this four metal extractors. Not the most valuable, but when you're ahead like that, you might as well just take the advantages you can get. That being said, they're also taking the good metal extractors. They are just pushing very far ahead while Sigaro and Ralop. They've got Reclaim. <laughs> they do have Reclaim. And Ralop trying to push that Reclaim into Zeus's. This is... Well, he's got three so far. Well, two so far, three in production. Not gonna work out too well. And Santa coming in. Oh, getting a bit of harassment in. Sigaro getting some harassment in. Getting rid of the solo collectors that Santa had built up. Which isn't bad. It's a wall that's no longer there. But still, I mean, just look at this. Santa and Dying Frame have all the map control. They have all of it. Not much more can be really said about this. There's just... They have all the map control. And with that, they have all the economy. And from there, they'll have all the units. I mean, Sigrun and Ralhop can do decently with Micro, I suppose. But even then, Warrior's coming in. The Glaive's coming in. The Pyros might be able to deal with these Glaives. The Warrior, not so much. The Lotus helps a lot, though. But even then, it doesn't really matter. Ralhop loses his commander. And I think that Ralhop and Sigrun are just going to surrender pretty much now. They have gotten nothing. I mean, this, this Warrior burns to death. But even then, there really isn't much. I mean, Ralhop and Sigrun have 10 income between them. Danik and... Seneca and Dianne throwing have about 38. They have four times the metal income. To say nothing of energy income, I'm not going to bother commenting on that. Just metal income. Metal income alone is keeping Seneca and Dying Front well ahead. The Ziggurat and Ralhop, they got another commander to reclaim. And a few more units as well. But that's their entire economy is basically just trying to reclaim their commanders and hope for the best. I'll reclaim everything and hope for the best. Of course, that can only last so long, and once that's done, there's only another... Well, it's 400 metal left in this commander, so it's not bad. But still... Ralhop doesn't have much... Sigurd's going for puppies, which I really wouldn't recommend at this stage, because the reclaim fields will want to use for things other than puppies. Because puppies are really only cost-effective when you have a massive reclaim field to work with, but without the static economy, or at least a strong static economy, using puppies in the reclaim fields kind of a waste of the economy you desperately need to stay in the game and not lose. Although, admittedly, Sigur and Ralhop are really behind at this stage. Pyro got a bit lucky in terms of where the defenders were relative to it. And actually gets rid of the defenders! Ooh, nice! That wasn't a bad play there. Pyro getting rid of the defenders with no casualty on his... Well, the only one around, so any casualty would stop the entire attack. I guess we're two defenders for free. Sigur continues to build up more puppies. Got four so far. No attempt at reclaim field. But the Pyro is having to move back away from these Glaives. There's too many Glaives for it to deal with. And... More ban... Well, yeah, Rocco, Glaive, and... Warrior coming in. Well, another Black Dawn is built up for Sanic. Because why not... Actually... Wow, they don't even have Caretakers? That's surprising. However, Sanic going for a Jump Bot Factory Switch with a Caretaker. Not actually investing in that quite yet. He has gotten one Pyro, but other than that, not actually spending any money there. But Sanic is starting to float his metal. 
I am surprised he hasn't built up a caretaker in his main base. I mean, he's got reclaim to work with. He's got his own black. I mean, that's that's 360 metal. He actually hasn't taken advantage of. In fact, his entire base. Quite a lot in his entire base that he hasn't taken advantage of. Let's see. That is about 630 metal total. In Santa and Diamond Thrones base, they have not taken advantage of. Oh, nice scuttle kit. Oh, wow. Got rid of the factory with the scuttle. Actually, was that? I think that was. I think that was Sigaro's scuttle, actually. I think Sigaro's scuttle just worked against him. Not sure, though, but it looks like it's. I mean, it's game. It has been game for a while. Sanic and Dying for moving for the kill. Not much more to be said about this. Sanic moving in with his own pyros to finish off everything here and Dying for him along the southwest side of the map. Just. If he's not harassing, he's hitting with Rocco's. Or rather, he's not raiding, he's hitting with Rocco's from distance. And there we go. That is game one. So congratulations. Game one for Sanic, oops, Sanic and Dianfreund. Game two in just a moment once they decide the map. Oh. Yeah, I think really the big thing I'd say is that Siguro and Ralhop, I mean, they were hit hard by that Black Dawn rush. That was a powerful Black Dawn rush. It's kind of hard to, to counter, especially when you're going with jump bot start. It's not too hard to counter if you're going, say, hovers. Although even then, a larger map is required. But yeah, jump bot start, that's just... That is tricky. That is hard to deal with. Quick Archangel's just not easy to get. Cloaky bot would have had a chance, though, building five or six gremlins. Probably would have happened in time. At least three or four would have happened by the time the Black Dawn came in. And came for the second volley. Didn't go over that, however, which rather reduce their chances to zero ultimately. That being said, we do have, like I said, a second game coming up in just a moment. And I think at yeah, this stage, I'm not really sure what to say about this. Like, Sigrun and Ralhop, it's just tough because they are dealing with Yeah, as you can see here, you know, the brackets finally updated. Yeah, Sigrun and Ralhop I don't know, Sanic really was carrying that, but Dying Throne did a really good job himself with the Glaives. I mean, the Glaive harassment, it was a little bit wasteful, but it worked. It really did work. And Sanic, Black Dawn Rush, good job there. Sigur and Ralhop, I think they're probably going to go for Anti-Air next game just to respond, given what happened in this one. I'm not sure, though. My guess is that ultimately they will be going for... Okay, are we... what map are we going for? Anyway, Ralhop and Zagro are probably going to go for a bit of anti-air. Maybe go for air switch themselves, or start with air. Like, get an airplane factory, get some swifts right off the bat. I mean... That could work. A little bit risky, because your opponent could get anti-air, and then from there you wouldn't be able to do any bombing runs, but that's that's an option. It definitely is something the players could do. We'll see, though. I mean, I, I remember Sigro did mention in the chat he did want to go air. But that never happened. Ralhop didn't decide to go for defense. Instead, Sigro went for Jump Bot Factory. And didn't really build that much with it, either. Actually, a little surprised he didn't build a puppy or two just off the bat to go for scouting and a bit of damage. He just went for Pyro, and by the time it came up, the Black Dawn was halfway across the map. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to game two of Seneca and Dynthrain versus Sigro and Ralhop. And this match is going to be on Moon Q10X. Surprisingly enough, of all maps, but yeah, it's that's the map they're going to be on. Moon Q10X. So, well, Sigro and Ralhop starting on the northeast side of the map. Well, Sanic and Dying is starting in the southwest, and it looks like Sigro might be going for Jumper. Hard to say. This is Cloaky Shield Bot map. This is what is often used here. You do see gunships from time to time. 1v1, you see Cloakies and Shields primarily. And Ralph apparently going for Spider, which is not really that useful. There isn't anything that's Spider pathable only on this map. While Dying Throne looks like. Dying Front and Sanic are thinking about going for another air rush. 
So you go on Rallop, not quite realizing how the terrain works, but I think, yeah, if Rallop goes for Spider, there's really no chance, or very low chance. Like I said, this map, it's, it's possible, but the fact of the matter is, there's nothing that's bot unpathable in this map. The Spiders won't have any terrain advantage, and they also won't have any particular advantage of being, like, ambushy. I mean, there's a bit of that, I suppose, but not much, unfortunately, without the terrain advantage. The yeah, Aralhop's just going to have to fight straight on the ground and be really careful about his units. That's the thing he has to do. He's careful. Oh, Sanic also going spiders. Wow. Really? That's interesting, but bizarre. Actually, no, he's starting out with a couple dozen starlights, apparently. No, no, never mind. Oh, well, we have a game start. Sanic going for Proxy Spider from the looks of it. We'll see. Sanic does have his commander up. And we have... Oh, oops. I how bright this map was. There we go. Anyway. Spider for Ralhop. Yeah, he's going for a few fleas. And, wait, what? There we go, yeah. Going for repeat fleas. Well, we have... Sigaro going for Air Factory inside this crater. Very quick start off here. Sanic, whoa, not even inside of his factory yet. Going with front commander, whoa. He's going for an aggressive support comm against fleas. He does know now that Ralhop's going for spiders, and as well he knows that Sigur is going for air. So Sanic, Sanic and Dynathroy know exactly what's going on. Although admittedly this Raven here, what is he gonna do? It looks like it's primarily scouting at first. He'll need three more Ravens. Well, I need three Ravens to kill this commander. Oh, sorry. This commander, Dynefront's commander. Sanic's recon com. That will take two. What is being built though? No further. No, one more Raven has been built. And Hacksaw about to be built as well. It is 30 seconds away from being done. We never see, actually see Hacksaws. They aren't apparently very good, but we'll see, I suppose. But yeah, apparently not very good for cost. And the Hacksaw's not going to last too long. Not even being constructed fully. Wait for this one raven to get built, or to get re, well, re-armed. And it will finish off that hacksaw. Though immediately the hacksaw is just about done. It won't survive another raven strike, or will it? Actually, it's close. It's really close. I think it will just barely survive the raven strike. And no, it's not repaired, but it doesn't matter. The raven has been killed, and proxy spider factory has been built. Now, air has been pretty solidly shut down. Well, Dynefront coming with some glaives to get rid of the... Oh, gets rid of all the defenders. And Sigur's commander going to lose. Okay, Sigur's commander about to go down. Although the air fact is the bigger target. Not even bothering the commander. It's going to kill off the factory and the metal extractor for good measure. But yeah, get rid of the factory. Sigur about to lose his air fact. Or would if more for the fact that Rattlehop coming in with a save with the Venom. Venom. A couple of Venoms. Nice last minute save there. Sanic actually hasn't gone for any units of his own yet. He has the factory, but no units going for economy first off. Kind of risky going with that front attack, but that, on the other hand, Sanic and Dynefroin did win game one, so they have a bit of leeway. Well, Ralhop with nearly a dozen and a half fleas. A little over a dozen fleas here. And pushes those forward. He should be able to have them all die horribly, and thus he's keeping them where they are. So it's exactly when Sigur decides to get out. And Gremlins, sorry, when Dying Furnace has to get out, Gremlins are up. Unfortunately for that Raven, they are missed, but Sigurd does realize, of course, the Hacksaw in the way, and is careful to avoid it on the return path. That is a really tr good spot for the Hacksaw. Really dangerous for the Ravens. They have to be, I mean, Sigurd has to be on the ball with every Raven going forward and returning. Cannot let it just automatically do its thing. There we go, Sanic does have some fleas now. He is setting them up for scouting as usual. Actually, no, sending him to harass the northwest. Unfortunately, I don't think... Do fleas even have the range to hit a crane? I don't think they do. We will find out shortly. I think maybe... No, if they're directly under, they do, in fact, have the range. And down goes that crane. So fleas for harassment. And Venom's coming in, however, as a counter from Ralop. But unfortunately, not dealing enough damage to get rid of the defenders before the last one reloads. Kills off one of the Venoms. And one of the defenders about... There we go. The second defender gets out of lock... Stun lock. And not much more to be said about that. Rallahop, he's stunning some defenders. 
Actually, he's done his standings commander. If he has some support fact Oh, if he had any support, that would be awesome, but he doesn't. And unfortunately, he cannot stun out the Venoms in time. Losing both... Sorry, he can't stun out the Fleas in time. And Sanic just has way too many Fleas. Just pushing more and more Fleas. Now switching over to Weaver to continue to build up the center of the map. Probably expand southwest and consolidate. Dying Flame, on the other hand, he's going for Glaze with Warriors. Just building up for a bit later on. Here, over come in. Is the Raven's seriously coming in? It's gonna die. Yeah, there's there's really nothing it can do against the defenders. And of course, if it's not careful, it hit the hacksaw. Do have some Phoenixes coming in to try to help out here, but even then, not much really. Nice, well, nice set with the fleas. Glaives are going down though, but ultimately, a few of the glaives do die. Most of the fleas as well, but nine fleas go down, but at the same time, all the glaives that were coming out were spotted and killed. About well, three or four of them. Not a bad attacking the defender. Okay, that was good. Got rid of a couple of the defenders that were weakened by the venoms. And it looks like will it burn down the last one? I don't know. It won't. It won't. Sixty health left. But still, not a bad shot there. And Sanix commander under some threat. Oh, actually, under all the threat. Ooh, nice dodge. Kills the defender and another good dodge. Avoids the hacksaw though. Does avoid losing at least one. No, lose, avoid losing both of the ravens to the hacksaw. Not bad, but Ralhop, he is not going to take any of this crap. Not going to allow this to abide in the center of the map. He is going to push back on here, and good on him. However, setting and Dynamite actually not that far ahead. Honestly, economy-wise or military-wise, they are not doing especially well. Actually, aren't doing all that much. And Siguro is... Oh, well, he's got some Reclaim, apparently, to work with. Ooh, did lose the Phoenix, however, but yeah, he's got some... He's reclaiming those Glaives that attacked earlier. And Ralhop and Siguro are not doing badly. So, unfortunately, Infiltrator coming in for Ralhop. We did see in the chat Sanic was playing and doing this. However, not really much of the support units. Ralhop has the better support units at the moment. The Venom and Defenders getting rid of the... Ooh, the Commander is about to go down, too. Or at least kind of risky. An Infiltrator... Sorry, a Hermit coming in. Not an Infiltrator. Similar model, but not quite. Sanic about to lose his Commander, and down it goes. Losing the Commander, as well as all the support forces, including that Hermit. The Infiltrator the only thing left, but Ralhop's Commander is perfectly fine. Absolutely fine. Ralhop completely survives that. And Sigur and Ralhop are pushing back. I think we should be able to take the center. If he takes the center, that's going to destroy Sanix everything, actually. Sanix basically going to be out of the game. Dynfroin would still have some stuff to work with, but Sanix wouldn't. I mean, he's lost his commander. He is lost, or he's at risk of losing his base. At this point, just Venoms, though, so not much that's actually threatening. No Hermits are... Ooh, never mind. No, that's just Venom. I thought it was Reckless for a second. Nope, no Venoms. Sorry, nothing but Venoms. No Hermits, no Recluses. No other support units. There are some air support. There is a Phoenix coming to get rid of these Glaives. Ooh, nice. Stun them out first. Very well done. Burns up all the Glaives. And down goes the Metal Extractor soon enough. Five Venoms. Okay, five Venoms isn't bad. Gets rid of the Metal Extractor and looks like Dynthroind can't easily support this. Red Bag coming in to try to get rid of the, glaive, the Venoms, but even that, that's going to get stun locked way too soon. Doesn't even get built before it goes down. And this center of the map... Not much Santa can do. Going to try to escape with his Weavers and rebuild elsewhere. But this center area of the map, this is gone. Sanic has lost control over it. If that Hacksaw goes down, then Siguro is just going to go nuts, probably, with the Ariants. Well, maybe. He only has one Phoenix and I think two Ravens. No, three Ravens, actually. He's got three Ravens, and yeah, that Hacksaw goes down. Oh, the Hacksaw stunned out. Down goes Ralhop's commander, wherever he... That is huge. Ralhop's commander was a big part of everything that Ralhop had going for him. The Venoms are still doing decently well, but unfortunately they do not have much firepower, and there isn't any other support firepower other than that commander, which is now dead. However, the Venoms still coming in, stunning out everything, at the very least stunlocking everything, and down goes the Hacksaw, opening up Sigaro to basically bring in all the air support. So Ralhop has at least opened this area up. At this point, it looks like Sanic is going to just lose everything. I think he's going to be eliminated. Dynthroin doesn't have much being built up. He's 
not got the best economy at the moment. A little surprising though, he's had all this time to build up around the map. He... No, he really hasn't. He hasn't even tried, he's just... Nope. Not even set up anything before. Not sure why he wasn't setting up economy beforehand, but at this point it doesn't matter, it's a little late now. And dropping it, trying to get rid of these weavers, a little bit tricky. These weavers, one solid hit would kill them. But I think at this point, Sigaro and Ralhop do have game two. I was completely wrong. I apologize, Ralhop, for not believing in you. You did well. Spider Factory actually worked out very well thanks to the Venoms. Terrain didn't help so much, but the Venoms stun lock really did. So this day is just a matter of when Sigaro sends in more forces. The one problem is the fact that Ralhop is just going mass Venom. He is not getting any other support forces here. And there are gremlins in play. They are at the front. But Sigaro and Ralhop are at least getting better economy. Sigaro is using this to build up more metal extractors, which is very good. And Ralhop, not quite. He's not using to build more metal extractors, but he does have he does have Sigaro's air support and more more Phoenix is coming in. Another Phoenix drop. However, that's gonna burn up all the venoms as well. Well, yeah, sets all the venoms on fire. I think it'll kill all of them. They have very little time to actually deal any damage before they burn up. One left out of three, the second one comes in for support. And the Redback finally up, but gets stunned out. As does one of the Roccos, which is about to die thanks to that as well. So, ultimately, not much to be said about that other than... Ralhop is doing quite well with those Venoms. I can see why he's sticking with them. He's... Probably, you know what, maybe he's best served with that. I mean, Sigaro's going for the offensive and Ralhop's going for the defensive. As long as Ralhop, as long as Ralhop gets rid of these gremlins, stuns them out. I mean, that's the only problem that Sigaro's having so far is trying to get through these gremlins. Setting a few of them on fire, which isn't bad, but still, he's about to lose the Phoenix. Down it goes. And Venom's at the north side, going to be taken up by Rocco's. If he's careful about it, he might not be so in trouble, but still not pushing as hard as he could be. So if he kept the Venoms alive and then switched over to Hermit or Recluse, that would work wonderfully. Or even Redback, actually. Redback of Zone. Redback of Zone would be great. The Recluse would be wonderful against Rockos. That's what he kind of needs right now to counter Rockos is the Recluse. Still, Sigaro does have the economy being built up. I mean, Ralop is basically giving Sigaro a ton of room to build up economy. And now Sigaro going around the back to just eliminate Dynethroid completely. Got seven ravens coming in, although two of them are not armed at the moment. But he has basically five ravens coming in. I think he's going to try to spread them across all these metal extractors. But even then, Dynethroid... He has apparently no metal income? Not sure that's going to be. It doesn't matter. Dynethroid's Pokebot Factory not killed yet. 16 health. Unfortunately, not all of those were armed. He really needs to get a rearm repair pad. Absolutely, Sigiro needs one of those. No doubt about it, and Spider Factory also just about down. Yeah, well, sending a Diamond Point to have it on the back foot, they aren't dead yet. Neither of their factories completely died, both very close. And this one about to be repaired by a handy nearby Conjurer. Yeah, it needs the rearm pad. Desperately needs the rearm repair pad. Because it's going to take about two minutes to get stuff that should take about 15 seconds. And a Faraday has been built up as well, so EMP on all sides. No one wants to let the other player do anything. I mean, other than Sigaro, you know, building up massive economy. Seriously, why is Dynethroin... He has... 1.8... 1.8... 1.8, that's... 1.8... Well, oh, that... That's... Much... Why does it list 5, five metal? That makes no sense. It's really weird. Anyway, uh, that odd display error aside... Dynethroid is still rather behind, I mean, one way or the other. He is kind of behind. And... Warrior coming in. A couple more... Uh, a couple more Ravens are... Coming through. They will be able to get rid of the Spider Factory. Ooh, the Spider Factory being repaired. But two of them attacking the Spider Factory directly will kill it. And the Faraday goes down. So the center of the map has been opened up once again. To ground forces, or any forces that are not going to be too affected by EMP. But Sigur and Ralhop are taking a while to get through this. There's actually people who are leaving the stream at the moment because, yeah, there's not much going on. And we are going to go into game three, most likely, given the way this game is going. 
And I'll just get this finished off. Really, I'm just kind of surprised. I did not expect spiders to work out as well as they did. I think large part of it is that Sanic made a huge risk going to the center of the map with the spider bot factory. I mean, spiders are kind of risky to work with. You got Infiltrator for calm kill, and he ultimately did get the calm snipe, but not the way he wanted to. I mean, you want Infiltrator for calm snipe. He wanted to have... Oh, he's got a tarantula left, too. But he wanted the calm snipe. Dying Throne didn't really have a whole lot set up for support. He didn't really build very much. His economy hadn't worked out that well, surprisingly enough. I just don't get what's going on. Why is not listing his metal properly? Unless it is, and I'm just miscalculating, but I'm fairly certain that's that there's an issue here. There's an error. Possibly an error in the rounding. Might be rounding before it actually adds together, but even then, that is a rounding and not just truncating. It should be okay. Then we rail up. He is He's staying in the center. Sanic has nothing. I am kind of surprised Sanic and Dying Friend have not just gone to game three yet. But yeah, Dying Friend, he's the only one who has any chance of really rebuilding from here. Their only saving grace is that the Siguro does not have... Oh, never mind! Hadn't had a rearm repair pad. It is under construction about 40 seconds before it's done. He only need a couple of those at this stage, but still. That's the only thing that's been keeping Sanic and Dying Friend alive. But yeah, Sanic's big risk in the center of the map. Didn't have any real backup, and Dying Throne did not build up enough to actually give him the backup he needed. I didn't build the Rockos he needed, didn't build enough Gremlins. Just didn't build very much. And didn't build any economy behind that either. Or built very little economy behind that. So ultimately, that was just a risk on their part. They were up a game, decided to go for a big risk, and it didn't pay off. But you know what? That's fine. Because they still have another game. They still have game three. And once they get to that, then we'll have game three, and hopefully it won't take too long to get to. And now the Clickbot Factory. Oh, never mind. Hacksaw going down. Not the best spread. Could have killed the Clickbot Factory and the Hacksaw at the same time. Would have taken only two bombers to kill the Hacksaw. Needs more APM. Still, Raffle Hop coming in, taking out the defenses. Where is coming in to actually help, but getting stunned out? Not much can be really done against this many Venoms without air or a large number of units. Anyway, Sigro rearming and repairing all of his planes pretty quick thanks to that pad. But I don't know how well it's going to work with this. He did get rid of the Hacksaw, so he has free reign to get rid of this base, but he could kill off the Clickabot Factory and all the Metal Extractors in one pass if he assigns the targets right. However, it looks like Ra Ralahop's Venom's going down, not quite getting what they need for attack. And the Phoenix is not able to do enough, unfortunately. However, we do have a Raven coming in to save the day. Kill off a warrior. Just... Uh, I I know, I'm getting a bit tired just because Sigur and Ralahop can win. And Sanic and Dying Point have lost, it's just I don't think they realize it. I mean, Sanic and Dying Point do not have much... They have only line of sight. But they probably realize at this stage that there isn't much they have that they can do. And Sanic, honestly, a good bombing run and Sanic is eliminated. Like one good bombing run and Sanic has been outright eliminated from the game. And then from there, Dying Throne, not much he can do. And a shield switch for Sigaro. Didn't even notice this. He's going for shield. He's got 40 metal income with, well, with Reclaim, but 30 without. Well, 25 without. So yeah, Sigaro has a powerful air force and is going for the ground switch. There's an air switch coming in for Sanic, but I think that's not gonna that's not even gonna last. These bandits are gonna find the base, they're gonna probably find the factory, and then that's gonna go down before a single unit is built. Although I don't know, Sanic might be trying to go around the back. Might I, no, he's not even gonna bother. He's gonna take care of this, although it looks like will he see it? Yes, he does see it! And he goes for it. Finishing it off, getting rid of Sanic, and Sanic wants to resign. No surprise, I mean, Sanic is actually about to be outright eliminated. In a few seconds, Sanic... Well, he has only he has a Lotus left, but that's it. Dying Throne, I think, still wants to stay in the game, though. I think he still has a chance, but nope, never mind. That is game two. We are at one and one. We're we going on to game three once the players choose the map. Yeah, that was, that was a risk. Center of the map risk. Did not work out. 
Not sure why he went for that in the first place. Like I said, Infiltrator Snipe, I can kind of see for the Comm Snipe. But even then, the Comm Snipe didn't actually pan out. I mean, Dying Throwing probably needed, would have needed to have a bunch of Glaives nearby in order to make that work. And Sigur going for Air, that was decently well shut down. I don't know. Rattle Hop just out Venomed and didn't lose his commander right off. He had a good set of Venoms, he had a good set of Defenders. Just a bit of a clutch moment there with the Infiltrator, but he pulled it off, got out of there, and ultimately killed Sanic's commander and basically set the match in a downhill spiral for Sanic and Dynefriend. But we're gonna have game two when they pick the map. Whenever that'll be. Not sure if there's that much time. Anyway, we'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is game three of Dying Friend Sanic versus Ralhop and Ziggoro, and this map is gonna be match is gonna be on banded planes. Which means pretty simply that it's going to be a kind of longish match because Bandit Plains is a tendency to be a fairly long running map when played in team game, actually played in general. Last time we saw it in the exhibition match stream was a 1v1, but even the 2v2 we saw last time, man that was a slog, just going back and forth with the vehicles, jump outs, it was just, that was an insanely long match. Okay, it wasn't really a slog, it was actually pretty fun to watch, but it was a long match. There's no denying that. So we have Sanic and Dynathroid over to the north side of the map. Sanic going for the north center. While Sigaro and Ralop at the south. Sigaro, where is he placing himself? What the heck? I. What? Okay. Not sure why he's placing himself there. Nowhere near any metal extractors. While Ralop, on the other hand, is. not yet placed himself. And looks like they are rather underconfident, but looks like, but I mean, who knows? Might work. Granted, this is a larger map. I mean, it's more a matter of the fact that Sanic took a risk. I mean, Sanic and Dynathroind were doing better before, but Sigurd and Ralhop aren't completely out of the running. I mean, LO wise, they're actually pretty close, though, in terms of how well they operate as a team. Good question. I'm not sure. Individual LO wise, however, it's not that far off. Like, it's... Sigur and Ralph are at a slight disadvantage, but not that big of one. Once Ralph actually sets his commander up, then we'll see where we're going. But it looks like... Ralph planning on going cloaky. Sigur going for air. And... See about Dynefront... Dynefront and Sanic. Sanic going for air as well. Dynefront going for cloaky. Which on this map... Not terribly surprising, but still a little bit odd. Yeah, it's not terribly surprising because, well, Raider phase on a map this large does tend to last a while. So we have Cloaky and Air versus Cloaky and Air, and the wrong audio. Yeah, Zero K doesn't have music during the map loading and placement when people are placing everything. That's why I have the other music running in the background. Anyway. Sanic is setting up wind generators. Setting up decent, well, decent economy build. He's actually not going for a lot of units right off. Getting Swifts now after setting his economy up fairly healthily. Dynefroid seems like he's playing and doing the same thing. Going to the southwest, sorry, northwest. He has a couple Glaives and a Conjurer just for safety's sake. However, Sigur and Ralhop were going much more aggressive. Sigur about to come in with. Ooh. Does get rid of a metal extractor with the Raven. And we have about half a dozen glaives coming in for Ralhop. Yeah, he is he is very aggressive. He's not built any conjurers yet, and moving very far. No, he has built one conjurer. But he's being very forward. Well, Ralhop on the other hand, going for air, so can't quite assert map control as easily. Actually losing a Raven, no anti-air on his part. Swift able to take care of the Raven. However. Oh, that Defender not actually... Oh, Defender has reloaded, but still... Ravens are not what Sigro needs right now. Dying Friend 
and Sigro, now they have rebuilt their or got their economy in a healthy spot, are going for units. Dying Front actually is building quite a few glaives himself, going for a bit of a counterattack. Well, going actually not quite counterattack, counter expansion. Both Ralhop and Dying Front going for the center high ridge expansions. And the Ralph going for a pretty... Oh, nice raid. Oh, Sanic, is he about to lose his commander? Yes, he is. Sanic loses his commander two minutes into the game, and along with that, a couple of a couple wind generators and a metal extractor. Airplane plant takes some damage, but does not go down. Still, huge econ loss. That is half of Sanic's economy down in one fell swoop. And does that Raven get in? Yes, it gets in before it dies, killing off... Oh, it missed. Missed the metal extractor. If it had hit, that would have utterly ruined Sanic's economy. Sanic still has a caretaker though, that'll be useful for reclaim. But yeah. That is just... That is painful. Sanic has actually taken that... Taken that loss. Taken it right in the chin, but he's... He's not out of the game yet. Nothing... No reason to say that. He is... He is still... Keeping up with this game. Does have a Swifts, does have a decent anti-air presence. There is a Hawk, however, for Siguro. Not to be outdone. That being said, Dying Front, actually not to be outdone, Dying Front coming in with a harassment of his own. Siguro's commander also unupgraded, but unfortunately for Dying Front, Siguro has much better defenses than Sanic did. And Sanic had no static defense in his base, while Siguro has quite a lot. So we have this Hawk coming in, and the Hawk actually having a bit of a tough time. Getting rid of these Swifts, it's not doing as well as I expected it would. And down it goes, that Hawk is... Well, it's dead at any rate. Down... Down is not the case. Dead yes, down no. That Hawk is going up. Or, or no. Are, are Hawks actually respecting gravity finally? Yes, they are. Hawks finally respect gravity upon death. I never noticed that change. It'll fall off the map before it dies, but hey, at least it's falling down. Hawks used to just die and then spin off and then whatever direction they were going, completely oblivious to the force of gravity. But no, they actually respect gravity now. That's good to see. However, Sanic, despite losing his main base, he is going for a northeast expansion. That being said, Ralph and Sigaro have been expanding quite a lot as well, and they are ahead economically, slightly ahead militarily, but not by much. Mostly, Sigaro is ahead of Sanic, Dimefront is ahead of Ralhop. So the air player... Sanic is slightly behind, but Dying Front is slightly ahead for ground play. And Dying Front, however, going in for an attack against a bunch of defenders, which will not be that useful. Going from the other side, if he does that though, if he flanks around, goes to the other side, he's not going to do that. He looks like he's planning on going to attack Sigurd directly. Yeah, right now, there's some pretty powerful defenses for... Well, this is an open spot, but... Yeah, this section of the map, for Ralhop, undefended. The Glaives get in here, Ralhop's going to lose a decent amount of his economy. And Sanic, gonna lose a couple of Hawks and a, well, got a Hawk and a couple Swifts to a couple of Hawks to Sigurus. The Sigurus gonna lose one of his Hawks, I think, in the process. Or no, not even, just kills a Hawk and that's it. The Swifts manage to get away. And the Glaives go for the attack, though Lotus has been put in place. That's not gonna be enough. That is not gonna kill the Glaives. It will slow them down a bit, kill a couple of them. The Defender as well will help, but still the Glaives are not going to die. The expansion, on the other hand, most certainly will. Four glaives is more than enough to get rid of this expansion. And the Lotus desperately being built, but not in time. Down goes everything. This entire expansion has gone down. So Dying Front, nice counter harassment. And expanding at the same time. That was well done there. Siguro and Ralhop, they're going to want to counter harass once again. Siguro has solidly gotten air control. He needs to start getting more bombers. He needs to convert that air control into anti-ground. But this is not going to be a quick game from the looks of it. Despite the loss of Sanic's commander early on, Sanic has recovered, getting his economy back up, and actually a slight economic advantage, though Dying Front is the one mainly carrying the advantage, but still, Sanic has recovered from the loss of his commander. At least economy-wise. And since he's not going for very much forward reclaim, it's actually okay. He hasn't lost that much in terms of overall map presence. And Sig- oh! Dying Throne's Glaive finally goes down to a defender over the southeast side of the map. Hero Defender. While at the same time, Siguro... Sorry, I was Ralph's Defender. Siguro, on the other hand, getting... Okay, there we go. Getting Phoenixes. That's a good thing to have. 
No, well, okay, there's a man here with the Hawks, but that's about it. Sanic building more Hawks of his own. I guess I couldn't, can't really say the air control is in Ralhop's hands. However, Ralhop is doing what he can to, to ensure it. And not a bad Phoenix drop here. Gets rid of a few, oh, quite a few glaze actually. These are three glaze. And heavily damages a couple more, though they do repair in time. But Ralhop following up on the ground with his own glaze. Got a bit caught up with them, but looks like he will ultimately win. Get the local advantage and kill off Dining the Throne's glaze. So Ralhop takes the glaze. Gets rid of a metal extractor. Oh, gets rid of two metal extractors. Dying throwing not in the right position. No, never mind. Just one. He's not going to go for the other. That'd be too big of a risk. Ralhop moving away. Still got rid of Dying Freund, but on the other hand, Dying Freund and Sanic are going massive economy. Ralhop has not taken any of these metal extractors. Sanic has to retake these metal extractors. Sorry, Sigaro has to retake these metal extractors. Sigaro and Ralhop are behind economically. They're ahead militarily. Sigaro's very much ahead militarily, but not for long. If he once he loses his units, I mean, the growth rate for Sanic is much higher. It's just at this stage, there is some room for Sigaro and Ralhop to harass. Going for Dynfriend's commander with Phoenixes. Can't say I agree with this, but it, it probably won't work. Ravens are what you want to do, not Phoenixes. Phoenixes, however, are going to be great in this section, the center of the map. Though Ralhop still holding strong with his glaives. Getting rid of... Oh, not quite another melee extractor. Oh, yes, he does. There he goes. Gets rid of the melee extractor. Pulls back. Does lose his glaive. But he gets rid of yet another melee extractor. Still dying for him very much ahead economically. Part of that being reclaim, of course. But... Even then, Sanic still losing his air force. Sigaro has solid air control. He is... If he didn't have air control before, he has killed off pretty much all of Sanic's air force. There's one hawk left. That's about it. And Dying Throne losing more and more Glaives to Ralhop. So Ralhop keeping his Glaives alive. So despite the economic disadvantage, Ralhop is doing quite well. As is Sigaro. Going for another pass on the Commander with the Phoenixes. It, it will work. I mean, he's going to kill the Commander. Down it goes. There's Dying Throne's Commander down. And now with all those Napalm Bombers. Wow, that's a lot that can be gone. Just hit anywhere on the map, just burn down everything. Mostly the glaives, though. That's what he really wants to kill. But if he kills those glaives, even the economic advantage is not going to matter all that much. Though, like I said, Ralhop needs to expand. Like, rebuild the south or build the east side. That's the one thing that Dying Front and Sanic have as an avenue back into the game, is the fact they still have an economic advantage, despite the fact they're losing a lot of units. And I mean a lot of units. Wow. There is still an economic advantage them. They're still going to get their army back fast. They're still going to build an army faster. Ultimately, they are going to get ahead that way. Unless Ralhop and Sigaro take advantage of their attacks to expand behind their attacks. If they do that, Sigaro and Ralhop will win this game, no doubt. But if they don't do that, Sanic and Dying Throne have a chance. And right now, Sigaro and Ralhop are not rebuilding. Sigaro, however, has pointed out, Hey, stuff to build. Build stuff here. However, they seem to have still forgotten about the south side of the base, which they did take and now have lost. Ooh, did they lose? Did more Phoenixes go down? Yeah, more Phoenixes have gone down. A lot of Phoenixes are dying to the Swifts and Hawks from Sanic. Sanic not taking loss of air control, or at least temporarily loss of air control. Not taking the temporary loss of air control, lying down. Still, Sigro does have air control. A bit local, but he still has control over the skies. Although he does lose a Hawk. Gets it out of position, and it does go down. Gets killed off by the Swifts. Position's very important here. Oh, Ralhop? Ooh, heavy machine gun. Don't see that all the time. Don't see that very often at all. Yeah, Dying Freund continuously losing his glaives. Just throwing a lot of glaives away. And that is keeping Sigurd and Ralhop on the game, though. Ralhop, now with a bunch of reclaim, thanks to these glaives. Needs to get static economy, though. So I think he needs that static economy. Very, very badly. And the south base. This south base is well inside Sigaro and Ralhop's realm of control. Like, they have map control over the side of the map. They have map control over this extractor, these extractors. They don't really have... It's contested for these three, but still, they have it well enough. They can probably at least try. And more air control wars. Sigaro still ahead. Well ahead with the Hawks. And he's got as many Hawks as Sanic has Swift, so unless the Hawks are out of position, Sigaro has this. But Dying Throne moving in with a bunch of warriors and glaives, but... Whoa, that level 3? Yes, it is! Level 3, head machine, a couple of repair systems, and concussion shot against the Warriors. Missed with the Napalm Bomber, though. Another miss with the Napalm Bomber. 
The last Napalm Bomber, it's gonna miss once again. Attacking unit that was already dead. And now these Swifts, ooh, get rid of a Hawk. Not bad, do take a Hawk kill. But a couple Hawks go down for Sanic. He is still way behind in terms of his metal per unit. Yeah, he's way behind in terms of the unit count. Like, the army advantage for Sigur and Ralhop has been non-stop. Sanic and Dying Throne do not have the economic advantage they think they do. And at this point, Sigur is rebuilding. Yep, he's getting those Metal Extractors back. Rebuilding along the south. Ralhop has not built along the east, but he's... Well, he's taking decent advantage of that reclaim. And there we go. Now those warriors are going down. One of them looks like it's about to burn up. Well, it doesn't matter. Defender takes it out. One warrior is left, but the glaives here will be able to over... Actually, just the commander will be able to overwhelm it. Down go those glaives, and Sigro just needs to be aggressive. Just needs to push forward with his air force, and I think that would be the game. I think it'd be match. I mean, whoever wins this, wins. Is this it? This is game three. Where is it going to be, though? When is it going to be? This is going to... Like I said, this is Ralhop and Sigro's game to lose. Has been for a little while, but definitely now. It's solid now. And there we go. Final attacks coming in for Sigro and Ralhop. Moving to the Hawks, trying to take the map control. Senek, really thinking he has air control, building up a Raven. Probably going to try to kill the commander with that. Yep, definitely going for the commander, but it doesn't really matter. These Hawks, well, not focusing on it. They are focusing on taking air control. Sanic, very thin air force compared to Sigro. And yeah, Sponge Pony on the chat. Both teams do, in fact, need to reclaim. Very good point. Especially, I mean, Ralhop's commander is right here. In fact, not just reclaim. Ralhop needs a caretaker. That's a Ralhop needs, or another factory. Sigro, Sigro is good for that. Sigro is doing a really good job using his economy. But Ralhop, not so much. Though Sigro is also reclaiming a lot with the caretakers. But yeah, the caretakers, they're doing a great job pushing in the metal. Ralhop, on the other hand needs caretakers here. He is flooding metal. Right now is a bad time to reclaim other than to avoid, I mean, prevent reclaim from going to enemy hands. Yes. Or opponent hands, rather. Not enemies, just opponents. It's, this is just a tournament. It's not a war or anything. However, nice Phoenix Bombs by Santa gets rid of Ralop's entire ground force. Sigro is a little bit out of position for his anti, oh, and Dynefriend's anti-air as well. Yeah, Sigro's a little out of position. This might turn around the unit type counters. I mean, Sigro and Ralhop are ahead economically, sorry, militarily, but Ralhop, a lot of that is the commander. Actually, all but 1,000 metal is the commander for Ralhop right now. Ralhop, this is your basket with all of the eggs. Be careful with it. Although, admittedly, it is not doing too badly, but yeah. Caretaker here would be really good, or a fact switch. Either one would work out beautifully right now for Ralhop. He has all the reclaim in the world he can take. I mean, he can reclaim while attacking, I'm pretty sure. And even if he can't, he still has a decent amount of support forces. His commander is right in the middle of all this. Just drop a caretaker here, for crying out loud. Drop a couple of caretakers by the factory, a caretaker here, and that's all the economy you need to win the game. And a couple of gremlins getting hit by the... Well, not much. Getting hit by the Phoenix, but really didn't do him much good. More Phoenixes are coming in. Yes, wow. How many Phoenixes does he have? He has... Half a dozen phoenixes. A little over half. He has seven phoenixes. And Ralhop getting rid of Dynethroin's hill expansion. Dynethroin being pushed back gradually. Economy advantage has been going down. Although, admittedly, this side of the map, that's where a lot of the economic advantage is. And if if Ralhop were to attack along here, if we were to go west from where he is now, his main attack force, he would probably win the game. Checking the base over. A bunch of ravens being built up. We have four Ravens and 2,600 health on Commander. He needs... Actually, he needs this Raven to be done. Once this Raven is done, Sandy can go for the kill on the Commander and turn this game around. Ralhop is building the Caretaker around the Reclaim. But yeah, once... If he loses that Commander, that's most of their game. However, Sigaro not going to let that just happen. Goes in. Oh, overcommits. It's unnoticed with Sigaro and Ralhop. He does have a tendency to overcommit... Oh, Sigaro primarily. He has a tendency to overcommit with his bombers. He doesn't split them up. He does occasionally, but doesn't often. I think he's area attacking from time to time. But he doesn't really split the bombers especially well. Because he could have killed off all the mental extractors in one run. And down goes the commander! Wow. What an explosion. Throws it up in the sky. But yeah, Ralhop loses the commander. And with that, the army advantage he had before still has economic advantage. But his presence right here, it's gone. Dynethroid taking back that north hill. 
couple defenders here to try to hold, but it's not going to be enough. Sigro looks like he's going to try to just go through, attack the base directly, get rid of Sanix production entirely, and will he succeed? No, he does not go for the right target. Gets rid of a couple of metal extractors and damages a caretaker. But otherwise, no, does not really get much of anything. However, Ralhop does get. Ooh, nice blade, Micro. Gets rid of all the Rockos with some pretty good Gilead Micro. Ralhop still in the game. Still needs to get caretakers by his factory. Very, very important. You can tell the players aren't watching the stream because Ralhop still does not have caretakers by his Clicky Buy factory. And in case you're wondering, I do have the stream on a delay. So in case the players were watching it, there is a delay. I did keep that in mind. Don't worry. However, it doesn't matter so much because Sigaro and Ralhop are basically winning at this stage. They're still winning. I mean, Sigaro is very much ahead. Ralhop, not so much. Sigaro is carrying the team right now. Sanic lost a fair amount of power there. Not all of it. Not most of it, even. Most of it's actually over here in the northeast side of the map. Still, main base, pretty heavily damaged. Lost a metal extractor. The caretakers, that's what, that's what needed to kill, though. But it looks like it doesn't matter. Sigaro going for the kill, just trying to just torch everything in Sanic's base. Caretakers are the best target. Or, no, not not the base? The main base? Yes, the main base. And not just the main base, he is going to go for the caretakers. Going to hit those out. Not much can be done with that. Getting rid of a couple ravens for good measure. And there we go. Gets rid of all the caretakers, and the factory does not go down. Factory will not go down, but still everything else. Well, sharpshooter up as well, but yeah. Caretakers are down, and Sanic does not have any easy way to push this metal in. That being said, Dynefruin, however, does. Dynefruin is still a major threat. That's the next target. Sigaro needs to hit all of Dynefruin's caretakers and his factory. That, with that down, that would be, although admittedly, killing the airplane plant would give Sigaro the air control. That would be perfect air control for him at that point. I'd also suggest going for Ravens. Get, get some Ravens. The Phoenixes are doing alright, but the Ravens are what you need for getting rid of the factories like that. Anyway, those Ravens up for another run. And they're going to go in for another run pretty soon. Do have a bomber, a Raven coming in here to try to, well, scout around. Not really kill anything. Might kill a Metal Extractor. Probably will. Yep, goes for a Metal Extractor. Takes that out. Doesn't really dent the economic advantage, though. Bit of damage to it, but not much. And Sigaro, is he about to see... He might about to be spawning the sharpshooter. Yes, he does. Sorry, Ralhop, I should say. Ralhop spots the sharpshooter. Loses the glaive that does it, though. And Sigaro gets rid of that raven. But he needs um, basically to attack with... No, if Well, okay, the, the phoenixes can go over here to the northeast. If the phoenixes go over to the northeast, then they will take care of pretty much the rest of Sanic's energy economy. Though Sanic has rebuilt some of it here. But yeah, will take care of a lot of Sanic's economy. And then from there... Not much more to really be said. So yeah, they're going... F no, they're not going to be going for it. Oh, they are. Never mind. Yes, they are in fact going for it. Unfortunately, despite the area attack... I guess area attack doesn't spread phoenixes like it does ravens. It does spread ravens. It doesn't spread phoenixes quite the same way, but it looks like... It did an okay job with the spread. Uh, not great. Yeah, that kind of needs to be a manual spread. And like I said, next target has to be this. This has to be the next target. A chainsaw is under production by Sanic. Which Dynefriend is helping out with. Sigaro has one shot to protect the main base from the air. Oh, never mind. The chainsaw isn't even... Oh, never mind. Sorry, not chainsaw. Screamer. My mistake. Yeah, he's got about a minute. So one, maybe two chances to attack from the air. That is it. That being said, it looks like... I mean, it's still pretty even. It's still fairly even map control. Ralhop still hasn't taken this set of metal extractors. South has been solidly taken, though, and has a decent amount of overdrive on top of that. Like, two times overdrive. Which, or actually, 1.75 times overdrive. Which is quite good, and in come the Phoenixes. Hitting some gremlins. Not sure what to do about it, apparently. But they are going to go straight for the main, and they're going to find the Screamer. They need to kill that Screamer, or at least kill off. Is he attacking it? No, he's scouting first. Good. So go for the Screamer. Tear that apart. Wow, nice! Hits the cranes in midair, too! Good shot! Doesn't get rid of the airplane factory, though. These caretakers, that's the main target. That's what he needs to kill. That or just other things. Unfortunately, loses a couple phoenixes in the process. And all the phoenixes have to go back to rearm. But hey! Not bad. Not bad at all.
Oh, sorry. Google Frog Pony on the chat. Small correction. The Phoenixes do spread when you do the area attack. It's just Dying Throne apparently wasn't doing area attack, I guess. I mean, it looked like he was. He had attack commands on every single metal extract, or sorry, every single wind generator from those Phoenixes. So I'm assuming he was doing area attack. I mean, he might have just done, held shift and right clicked on everything. That could have been it too. But I Google Frog pointing out that apparently Phoenixes are supposed to spread, which is what I expected. I'm not sure what Dying Throne did there. If it wasn't area attack, then there might be a bug. At this point, though, Sigaro... Sorry, not Sig Dying Throne did. But Sigaro did. Dying Throne didn't do anything. Dying Throne just... Well, he's done a lot, actually. He's done a lot with the Gremlins. No. Sigaro is the one who attacked, not Dying Throne. That would be... That would be just bad. Friendly fire? No. And still, like I said, Sigaro, once again, just fo way too much focus on a single thing. When he could only... He'd only have to use one or... Maybe two Napalm Bombers to kill off one Metal Extractor. Yeah, that that's the thing. He needs... I mean, Sigur's not bad and wrong. He needs more practice with his spread, his split. Or just use Area Attack more often. That works too. But if you want to split to specific things, then... I think you can do it with Area Attack. I'm not 100% sure. That might be a special way of doing it. Yes, A plus Circle is Area Attack. You hit... Here, I'll show you. So if you hit... Or in my case, actually F, but do that. A for me is Spike Man, so no, but yeah, A normally is attack, so you do that. Hold A and drag, or hit the area attack command, or attack command, drag a circle, that's your area attack. And it looks like we do have, yeah, it looks like area attack, I don't know. Yeah, okay, it is spreading, it is spreading decently well. Very well, actually, very effectively, getting rid of Dying Front's entire force, but that Screamer, that was built. Screamer's up, 2400 metal though. If Ralhop comes in with ground support, gets rid of that Screamer, and he has a character guard's factory, by the way. He has built that up, but he needs, you know, two or three more. Good start, build more. Once Ralhop does that, then we should be solid. Or then he should be solid, not we. What am I saying, we? I am impartial. I just kind of want the game to end, <laughs> because I want to get to the next game, because it is like 3.30 in the morning, and kind of this tournament not take too long so that I can sleep a bit because I have to go out in the afternoon. But anyway, that aside, Dying Throne does have does some reclaim going on. He, does some, he has a gremlin line, which is doing pretty well, though if it gets spotted out, it could be torn to shreds by the glaives. And come on, well, more Zeus is coming in. That's all that right now it seems like Ralhop is building, as much as Zeus is. And Sigaro, oh my goodness, ten over 10,000 metal in units. Doesn't even matter. He's got how many? He has 16 Phoenixes going out for an attack. He better spread these against all the economy here. Actually, better spread it against everything. But he's not. He's going along the east side of the map. Is he going up through here to the northeast? I think he might be. If he's going to the northeast. That could work pretty effectively. It looks like a fax switch. Yep, fax switch is happening to heavy tanks over to the northeast side of the map. So that will work. And unfortunately, though, the Screamers are doing a really good job. Fortunately, though, uh, against Swifts. We're just scouting at the Heavy Tank Factory. Do see it. Heavy Tank Factory has been produced and is about to be burned to the ground. Although, I don't know, even with 16 Phoenixes, I'm not sure. No, he's not even targeting that. He's going straight for these guys. So, Sigaro, he's using a lot of Phoenixes to hit... Target that's not really relevant. He does hit it. Fires a few on the Heavy Tank Factory. Gets rid of the Caretakers. Gets rid of the Crane as well. So the Heavy Tank Factory is going to have very long production time. It's about a minute before it actually produces anything. But still, Ralhop and Se Ralhop and Sigaro, or Sigaro mostly, needs to repair, needs to rearm, needs another couple rearm pads. And has gone for Shield Switch, by the way. Sigaro has gone for Shield Ground Switch. Getting a couple felons. And a bunch of thugs. A dozen thugs and a couple felons. Using that, along with a couple Aegises. Actually, wait, these are... These are Ralhop's Aegises. Just built those up, just to hold the center even stronger. Although, admittedly, he has no reclaim he can really build. Looks like he wants to build another Caretaker somewhere. But yeah, Ralhop just needs another Caretaker, and then from there... At his factor, I should say. From there, he can spend all of his metal there. Sigaro also needs a couple more caretakers. From looks, mostly being used for repair at the moment. Yeah, another repair rearm pad would be nice, but even then, it doesn't really matter. 
This force of butts is about to go down to another line of napalm bombers. But honestly, no real dents have been made. Like, why? Why does dying? For, why are dying for insanic still around? I mean, how are they not lost at this stage? Sigro and Ralhop, or Sigro primarily. I mean, Ralhop actually hasn't been attacking at all. But Sigro, his attacks. Good job getting rid of the front line stuff. Except for you know losing to the screamers, but still, good job getting rid of the front line stuff. But at this stage, not sure how well it's going to work. However. Sigaro finally getting rid of all the economy over to the north, well, the center west side of the map. With the felons and thugs. Ripping that all apart. And about to get rid of a few gremlins as well because they happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Getting spotted out and down go all the economy structures over the west side of the map. And with that, most of Dying Friends economy, and actually Dying Friends economy heavily threatened over the northwest. Building a geothermal plant, that's not even going to be finished, I don't think. No, it is going to be finished. Sigaro is not going to spot it. But he is going to go over to the northwest, tear apart this expansion. And this area here to the northwest center has not been rebuilt. That hill expansion that Dying Throne got at the very start. Nope. Not happening. Not yet, anyway. And Ralhop moving in with... How many Zeus? He has 18 Zeus. 18 Zeus is coming in here. That... Well, that'll eventually fall pretty heavily to a bunch of Rockos, but not enough Rockos are in place. And, of course, there's a lot of Phoenixes. Those Phoenixes are doing a wonderful job. And the Felon Ball continuing to move incessantly forward. Oh, he's got an Aspen Long as well. Oh, never mind! Disarm gets rid of all but one Felon, one Thug. A bunch of Glaives coming around the back to try to help with this, but unfortunately, that Felon's going to be out of energy. These Glaives, they have four seconds to kill everything, and they won't succeed. They will not succeed. Not a bad disarm, but now everything is back up and running, and the Glaze are now dead. Bit of a shame, that. However, we do have... You now the Hawks is coming in just in case for air support. Yeah, Santa can die in Just about to die. It's... It's been Sigur and Ralhop's game for a long time, they just haven't realized it. And now they do. And now they're going in properly for the kill. And there's nothing that Sinek and Dynetrain can do at this point to stop them. Or maybe. Very little I can think of. Sheer number of units. The sheer army size difference, let alone the economy size difference. I mean, now they actually have... Wow. How much... How much... Wow, that is... Oh, that's not even connected properly, but it looks like... Oh, it's overcharged... Overdriving one metal extractor to nine from two. Four times jump. If that gets connected to the rest of the grid, though... That... Will be very nice. Looks like it doesn't matter though. Sigaro and Ralph. Sigaro getting rid of that pesky screamer. Kills that off. And that is game. That is match. Well done. Well done. I did not have anywhere near enough faith. Oops. I don't have anywhere near enough faith in Sigaro and Ralhop. But they did it. They won game. They won round one. Wow, very well done. So, despite the slight disadvantage, despite losing the first match, they are going to be going up against Scuzzy and Black Duchy. Not sure if that's the next round, but sheesh, that that was a bit of an upset, but a small upset still. Nicely done. Although, like I said, you could stand to be a bit more aggressive and spread a bit more. And build more character around factories. There's a lot of little mechanical things that are going to trip them up later on in the tournament. I think even against Gazi and Black Duchy, that are going to be problematic. However, not sure what the next match is going to be. It probably will be the very match I mentioned. So, Skazi Black Duchy. Yeah, there we go. There's the scores up. So, Skazi Black Duchy versus Sigiro and Ralop. Yeah, very nicely done. I'm mostly saying that over and over again is an apology for having doubted them beforehand and kind of acted like they weren't going to win. But they did. That... That worked out. So I'll just wait until we actually decide who's going to be playing. It looks like Spider-Man is here now, finally. So we can play the Cube Spider-Man's Family Internal Rookie game. Not sure if we're going to play that first or... Ralhop Sigur versus Skazi Black Duchy. Who I think might be calling himself veteran right now. Not sure. 
Is this guy Black Dutchie? I think he is. No, never mind. What am I saying? No, he's not. Black Dutchie is Dutch. Veteran is apparently Hungarian. Not sure who Veteran is then. Sorry, he's a player who happened to be just jumping into the game. I... No, he's someone completely different. Okay, never mind. Looks like we are going for S. Fireman's Failman versus Eternal Rookie and Cubay at the moment. That is going to be the next game. <sighs> yeah, actually, you gotta say, I've got to say, I am rather surprised how well those Phoenixes were working. I mean, that's... Phoenixes are pretty powerful, yes. Yeah, I'm surprised how well that was working out. Because normally you just see a bunch of ravens being used for sniping things. Phoenix is like, mass phoenix like that doesn't really come up all that much. So it's interesting to see. It actually did work fairly well. I mean, it did have some disadvantages against heavier buildings. But against large forces, of course, that's where it's meant to shine. And against metal extractors, it was pretty good. But against factories, yeah, that's where you use ravens. That's why ravens exist. That really is why it exists. Not sure what, like I said, not sure what match is going to be next. I think Scuzzy and Black Dutchie are, I'm not sure where Black Dutchie is actually. I mean, everyone's here for the other match. Oh no, Black Dutchie is here. But it looks like we haven't decided. Okay, it looks like Scuzzy and Black Dutchie are going to be going on while... Spider-Man and Spider-Man QA Eternal Rookie goes on simultaneously. Not sure which one I want to do. I really kind of want to see how Sigur and Ralhop do against Skazi and Black Duchy. But at the same time, Spider-Man and Spider-Man QA Eternal Rookie should be a fairly even match. I don't know. Sort of, if Sigur and Ralhop turn out to be this Royal Road upset, that will be... That was something I'd want to watch, but I don't know if that's going to happen. That'd be pretty big. That'd be an escalating set of upsets. Not sure, although, although, to be fair, Randy and Golda are not here, but still Google Frog and Anarchy. We saw Anarchy the Sponge earlier. I mean, they would just wreck Sigur and Ralhop, most likely. Though, Sigur and Ralhop might have something up their sleeve, but yeah, they probably wouldn't be given the time. But we'll see. They ma neither match has started yet. Oh, what? Actually. Okay, I'm not quite sure what. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Fireman's Veil and QB Eternal Rookie. That's what I'm gonna do. So once that starts up, I'll be back. Stay tuned. <laughs> 